for the last two Sundays, our sermonic focus has been on David's mighty warriors or David's mighty men. We have talked about Eliezer as one of the three mighty warriors. And we remember that Eliezer stood his ground in past the mean. While all the other Israelite soldiers retreated from the Philistines. Uh -huh. right. Eliezer fought until his hand grew tired uh -huh. and froze to his sword. Uh -huh. And because he stood and fought. The Lord gave him great victory over the Philistine army. On last Sunday, we talked about David's mighty warrior named Shammah, who stood his ground in the middle of a bean field located in the promised land against the Philistines. And we also learned that the Lord brought about a great victory because Shammah stood. Today, we want to talk about all three of David's mighty warriors. Let me go back quickly and grab the first mighty warrior. The first and chief mighty warrior of David was a brother named Josheb Bashebeth. He was chief of the three mighty warriors. He was chief because he raised his spear against 800 men whom he killed in one encounter. 800 men against one. But the Lord <laughs> brought a great victory. Josheb, Bassabeth, Eliezer, and Shammah were the three mighty warriors recognized by David the king. Yeah. Now, Fred, in order to harmonize scripture with scripture, uh -huh. mm -hmm. we understand that Joseph Bashabeth, uh -huh. Eliezer, and Shammah were not always considered mighty warriors. You see, when we harmonize scripture with scripture, when these brothers first showed up to the cave, Adjulam, where David was initially hiding from King Saul and the Philistines, that in 1 Samuel chapter 
22 and verse 2. It describes these men as being men in distress, men in debt, and men that were discontented. You see, they were distressed because they were under pressure and under stress from Saul and the Philistines. They were in debt, bankrupt, if you will, because the creditors were after them. And so they had to retreat to the caves for relief. <laughs> they were discontented. They were in bitterness of heart and had been wronged and mistreated by Saul and his army. These brothers showed up to the cave that David was hiding in. And David becomes their leader. He becomes their commander. And he teaches them how to fight yep, that's right. and to be mighty warriors. That's right. That's right. Many of us here today can identify with the beginnings of David's mighty warriors. When we started out on our journey of faith, yep. we too started out in distress, yep. in debt, yep. and discontented. Yes, but our King, yes, Christ Jesus, did not forsake us in our wilderness or in the caves of life that we dwelled in. He taught us how to fight and how to stand our ground when we face the battles of life. David the king is in the cave of Adjulam. The cave of Adjulam was about 17 miles southwest of Jerusalem and about 10 miles southeast of the city called Gath. You good Bible remember Bible readers remember Gath, don't you? Gath was the home of Goliath, the Philistine giant. In other words, David and his men are held up in a cave that is closer in proximity to their enemy. And in actuality, David and his men are surrounded by their Philistine enemy. They were camped out, hidden in the enemy territory. While in the cave, David reflects on his earlier days. The early days that he spent in his hometown of Bethlehem. Deacons, he 
recalls the well of water that sat at the gate of the city that refreshed him so often in the days of his early past. He knows that the Philistines now have set up a garrison in his hometown of Bethlehem. But yet he longs for a drink of water from the well at the city gate. David says, oh, I wish that someone would get me a drink of water from the well outside of the city gate of Bethlehem. He does not order his soldiers. He does not command them to go, which he had the right as the king. But he just expresses his desire to be refreshed from the well at the gate. David's three mighty warriors Hear the request of the king. They have fought many battles when the odds were stacked against them. But they stood their ground trusting that the Lord would make a way out of no way for them. That the Lord would see them through. They hear King David's request. Let us look at the steps that they took to get their King David what he desired. And as we look at the steps that they took, think about the question, what will you do for Christ, your king? Uh, first, let me suggest to you that they considered their king's request. They considered their king's request. They considered their king's request. Though the king's desire was great, Fred, at least, they considered it. If it would have been some of us, we would have never given an ounce of consideration to what the king desired. We would have said, has the king lost his mind? We're here in the cave of Agilum in the stronghold hiding from Saul and the Philistines and here talking about he wished somebody would get him some water from a Philistine stronghold. 
I suggest again, if that would have been some of us, we would have never even given consideration to what the king desired. On the other hand, when we think of this question, what is it? that Christ, our King, desires of us. He desires of us to live godly lives. He desires of us to let our light so shine before men that they might see our good works and and turn, give glory to the Father? Christ desires us to be his witnesses? Am I right about it? And Christ desires us to obey his word. So the question is, do we even consider Trying to fulfill what Christ our King desires of us. Do we even consider trying to live holy? Oh, y'all just. Do we even really consider obeying the word? (laughs) Y'all looking at me funny. Y'all looking at me hard. Do we even desire or do we even consider being a witness? Do we even try to fulfill Christ our King's desire for us? Well, These three mighty warriors heard the king's desire and considered undertaking the king's desire. Not only did they consider the desire, but secondly, David's three mighty warriors were willing to collaborate together Uh on how they could possibly accomplish the king's desire. Uh Lean up and tell your neighbor, collaborate. Collaborate. (laughs) The three mighty warriors were First of all, willing to consider the king's request. But then they understood the power in collaboration. They collaborated together. They knew that in going to Bethlehem, that they would have to face and deal with the Philistine army. They knew that each one of them had their own strengths. But they also knew that if they would pull their strengths together, if they would collaborate, (laughs) they would stand a better chance of accomplishing their goal. (laughs) There are some of us here today 
who have lost some battles simply because we tried to fight the battle only in our own power. We negated the strength that comes with collaborating with others. Okay. The three mighty warriors use the power of collaboration to get David, their king, what he desired. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I thank God for the power of collaboration. I'm glad that as pastor of New Providence, I don't have to think that I have to do ministry all by myself. I thank God for associate ministers and deacons and trustees and deaconess and lay members because we understand that it's going to take all of us. Oh, man. To make the kingdom of God what it should be here on the earth. I thank God that I have folk who collaborate with me in prayer. Yeah, that's right. That's right. When I'm sick and when I'm down, I, I know I got some collaborators here. Oh, Lord. Sure, I know my prayer makes it up to heaven. I, I know that the Lord hears my prayer, but I like when other folk call my name too. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. You did not make it through life up to this point by yourself. It was the prayers and collaborative efforts of others that brought you where you are right now. Mamas and daddies and grandmas and teachers and others collaborated with you. Worked with you. Prayed for you. Encouraged you. In order that God's desire might be fulfilled in your life. David's three mighty warriors not only gave consideration to what their king desired, not only did they, were they willing to collaborate together to fulfill their king's desire, but they also allowed their courage to conquer their fears. Thank you, Lord. Courage will always conquer fear. Courage will always provide the breakthrough necessary to overcome the enemy. Because these three mighty warriors considered the king's request because they collaborated together to fulfill their king's request, they ultimately 
mustered up the courage to take on any obstacle they would have to face. I'm almost through. The text tells us that after considering fulfilling the king's desire and after collaborating together, pulling their resources together in an effort to fulfill the king's desire. The Bible tells us that they struck out. Tell your neighbors, sometimes you got to strike out. They struck out on doing that which their king asked them to do. <laughs> Listen, the Bible says they broke through uh -huh. the Philistine lines. They broke through. They had a breakthrough. Uh -huh. Come on, y'all. Y'all. When, when, when you grab hold the courage and faith in God, God will give you a great breakthrough. They, 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 they broke through the Philistine lines. They went to the well, drew out water, and broke back through the Philistine line and brought it back to the king. What new providence are you willing to do for Christ, your king? Are you willing to consider doing what he desires? Are you willing to collaborate with one another in order to fulfill his will. Oh, come on, y'all. Will you muster up the courage to at least overcome your fears and trust that the Lord will make a way somehow? See, that's the problem. We want to know how God's going to do it. But if we take courage, strike out in faith, trust in the Lord with all our hearts, and lean not to our own understanding and acknowledge him in all our ways, he will. Can I get a witness? I said he will. Direct your past. He'll have you breaking through the enemy's lines. Have you doing things, supernatural things, that others cannot do because you found courage and trusted him for the end results. What are you willing to do for Christ, your king? We already know what he expects of us. We already know what he desires of us. How much do you love him? Oh, come on now. Come on. See, I want to suggest also that these three mighty warriors love their king. Yes, sir. 
to take and put their lives on the line. Oh, wait a minute. How much Jesus says, greater love has no man than this. That's right. Than a man lay down his life, oh Lord, for his friend. These three brothers put their lives on the line because King David had a desire. What are you willing to put your life on the line for? Are you willing to fulfill Christ's desire for your life by trusting him to empower you to do all things? I'm finished. At least give the Lord some consideration. And instead of trying to do it all on your own, get some brothers and sisters and collaborate together. Because it's easier when you got two or three. Oh, come on now. Than one person carrying the whole load. And then have courage. Take courage in the Lord. Because courage will overcome your fear. And after you considered, after you collaborated, after you taken courage, watch God. That's right. Watch it. That's right. That's right. Lean up to the neighbor and say, just watch God. <laughs> Ain't nobody like him. Ain't nobody like him. That's right. That's right, preacher. He has all power. In his hand. Even when the enemy comes in as a flood. The Lord with you is greater than the enemy against you. Have you lately thought about? What he has already done for you. My God, he woke you up this morning. Clothed yet in your right mind. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Kept a roof over your head last night. Got clothes on your back. On the table. And if it ain't on the table, it's on somebody else's table. Reasonable portion of health and strength. He deserves our praise. He deserves all of our glory. He deserves. The best of our service. Here we go. What are you willing to do for Christ your King.
Will you fight? Will you take on the enemy? Will you go the extra mile? Let me make it personal. Will you come to Bible study? Oh, Lord. Will you come to Sunday school? Will you pay your tithes and offerings? Lord, have mercy. Will you present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him? What are you willing to do? Are you willing to even consider facing the Goliaths of life and the Philistine armies of life? Are you willing to at least take your sword out and fight for the kingdom of God? What are you willing to do for Christ our King? Listen, these three guys were willing to do this for David. David was an earthly king. David doesn't have the power that God has. But they loved him so much that they were willing to give their lives for the sake of the king. Are you willing to give your life for the king's desire? Come on, stand to your feet all over the church. Sometimes, new problems, I feel shame. I feel shame. Why do you feel shame, Pastor? I feel shame for some of the things I refuse to do because I'm scared. Can I talk to y'all? Because I don't feel I'm qualified. And there are some battles that I have run from when I should have fought. But because I was ill-prepared or I felt I was ill-prepared or I felt that it was my battle instead of the Lord's battle. Sometimes I wouldn't even show up on the battlefield. Touch yourself and say, brother ain't talking only about himself. I, I, I've been there, I've been there. I've been. I know what the king of kings desires for my life, but yet and still though I know what he desires, I know what his will is, I still have my hard-headed moments. Anybody in here have hard-headed moments? But don't you thank God for the grace and the mercy of God who looks beyond all our faults and yet blesses us based upon our needs. We serve a mighty good king. But I'm trying, I'm trying each and every day to live better than I did the day before. Because after it's all over New Providence, I don't know about you, I want to hear him say, well done. You fought a good fight. You finished your course. You kept the faith. I want to hear him say, well done. Yes. But I have to understand that 
It's got to be his way. Not my way. Not my will, but thy will. 